What is going on guys? Today I am coming after another one of the holy grails of menswear and that is the supremacy of buying vintage clothing. Now, before we go any further into this, I wanna tell you that this is kind of a roundabout summation of the last two videos that I've posted. Uh, if you haven't checked those out, please do that. The first one you can find here. It's about stopping playing dress up and how a lot of guys, when they start to dress better, they're basically just cosplaying as gentlemen and why I have a problem with that. And then the second one is related to fit and proportion. It's actually the second video in a series where I'm talking about that. And it addresses the value of going high rise in a pant. And one of the things that I expected to get from you guys, and I saw quite a bit of, was that I was contradicting myself because what I was saying is that I took cues from men like Walt Disney and others who wore suiting in the 40s, and then I decided that that was going to be applied to classic styling and that that was, that was good and that men would be better served if we dressed like that. The problem with that is it's a conflation of cause and effect because I don't find value in what the men in the 40s were wearing because they were wearing it in the 40s. I find value in what they were wearing because it follows scientific principles like the golden ratio and phi. And so this idea of it's good because it's old, which actually is a logical fallacy, it's an appeal to tradition, doesn't work. And trust me when I say that I'm aware of that because I was guilty of it myself. But it's one that you need to be aware of and need to be conscious of. I know that in my own style journey, when I first started really dressing better, and not like when my brother brought me an issue of GQ, but like I really doubled down and was, I'm going to dress like a man and a gentleman, was about 2009 after really getting into the art of manliness. And Brett does great stuff. And one of the things that Brett does is he appeals to that old time aesthetic. And between that and Mad Men going on, I just, I did what a lot of you guys do. I started dressing up like it was a different era because I thought that things were better then. It's an appeal to tradition. Now what's interesting is that this is an example of the idea of aesthetic inertia. If you haven't checked that out, go check this. A really quick summation of that though is aesthetic inertia is the idea that men on an individual level, which is as far as we've talked about it before, on an individual level will take an aesthetic that is intentional. Because when you're in high school, you dress like your friends. You make sure that you dress like your friends. You make sure you dress in a way that you think is gonna attract girls or that you think is cool, or for whatever other reason, you end up dressing very intentionally and deliberately in high school. Same thing probably happens in college, but then for most men, once they're done with that individual component of their lives, because they get into a career, or they get married, or they have kids, or at some other point, they individually feel like, I have checked off all the boxes, and now I just need to put my head down and move forward. They continue to dress like they did when they were at their peak, or at their peak individuality. And there are so many problems with that, but the big one is that you're communicating that that's as good as it got. The, the 90s were the best time I've ever had to be alive because that was when I was still my own man and I wasn't beholden to the drudgery of a job or a family or anything else. Now this applies not only on an individual basis, but on a societal basis as well. And one of the things that you are probably doing if you are a slave to vintage is admitting, even if it's subconsciously, that what you believe is that society peaked during that era, even if it's just that it aesthetically peaked. And that's a very common and a very easy thing for us to say, that, oh, I wish that I lived in X time because men dressed better then. Now, there's a big difference between dressing up more or dressing more formally or dressing more intentionally because it is not an accident that the majority of men, we all end up looking the same, at least according to our little separate tribes. We don't just individually fall to this lowest common denominator and that's it. We dress very intentionally based on status and budget and tribal affiliation and all of these other variables. You may like it more because of a different time period than you do now, but it's not more intentional, it's not more effective, it's just more dressed up or it may be more aesthetically pleasing. But the problem with holding on to that and thinking that if I dress that way, I'm just going to communicate that I'm a gentleman or that I come from a better time or I adhere to a better time, Essentially what you're doing is you're saying that that was the peak. We went all the way up here and then er, that was it. And now society is coming down and all I want to do is try to get back up here, get back up to the peak. And again, whether that's on an individual level or on a societal level, that is what you're communicating. The problem with that is that it's a negative mindset. It's poor internal presence. 
because what you are subtly saying to yourself and also you're externally presenting to other people is that your best days or our collective best days are behind us. It's pessimistic. And so what you should be doing is dressing in a way that's aspirational. Absolutely take cues or have vintage finds and apply them in a more modern context, but do something that takes it to the next level. Because otherwise, you're just saying that, you know what, screw this time period, screw 2017, the rest of you guys are a bunch of idiots, you're a bunch of slobs, you're a bunch of bores, I don't want anything to do with you idiots. I just want to live like it's the 60s again, or I just want to live like it's the 40s again. And so you're giving everyone around you the aesthetic middle finger and saying, you know what, you're a bunch of bums, I can do better than this. And that is a complete lack of social fluency. That is completely antithetical to all the benefits that can come from dressing well. Because now, rather than having people be in your camp, Rather than having people be positively influenced by your style, you are completely alienating yourself except for the other gentleman cosplayers who may be in your online tribe who may think, well, yeah, you know what? That Jay Harris tweed that you found, that's killer and only a gentleman would wear that. Or what's up with all these idiots who step outside without putting a hat on their heads? Great rules, great finds, but they don't apply anymore. And unless you can apply them in doses, in small doses that contribute to the overall picture of social fluency and a strong presence, you think you're dressing well, but you're dressing poorly and you're hurting yourself, you're not helping yourself. So what I want you guys to take away from this is if you are a slave to the mindset of vintage clothing is the best clothing, check that because it's not going to benefit you. Again, that doesn't mean that you can't wear vintage stuff or that you shouldn't be pumped about really good finds about old clothes, but if your thirst for vintage makes you look like you're wearing a costume, you're hurting yourself. You're not helping yourself. Can't wait to hear what you guys have to say about this, so leave a comment down below. As always, leave me a thumbs up. That helps the channel grow, and I will catch you guys on the next one.